We want to open for questions, so I will not even take advantage of, of the uh, having the microphone to say anything. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'm John Kuhnrod with The Hunger Project. And um, this is a great wrap up of an enormous amount of work. Um, I have a real question about how, what you learned about layering and particularly with those curves comparing a control group and, and the rest in a situation where there's mass media coverage. Is, is that the difference between the mass media impact and the social visit impact? Or, Tell me a little more about how you unlayer some of these things. And then if you've got another three hours, tell me how you're going to do this in India. So. <laughs> Other questions? Yes, uh, in the front. Derek, and well, there was one in the front, but you can come back. And Derek, and then we'll come back. Thanks. Uh, so I don't know who this question is for. It's a kind of a question about togetherness and external validity and scalability and everything. Um, but is there a tension between um, doing a quantitative evaluation here and a process evaluation? Because you, you want this thing to go to scale. You want other NGOs to do it. But not every NGO is going to have if we're doing a process evaluation during the process. So what's the counterfactual? Would this have been had a different result if IFRI wasn't doing a process evaluation? Hi, thank you very much for fantastic uh, presentation and, and remarks. Uh, I'm Augustin Floy from Results for Development. Uh, my question is about the next, kind of the next phase um, and working in countries that do not necessarily have kind of strong outreach platforms the way Ethiopia or Bangladesh or Vietnam in a different way had and kind of how you're seeing this as a, you know, as a, as a barrier to overcome and if you have you know, insights or thoughts that you can share about that. Hello, it can be all Harvest Plus. Thank you all so much. It was very informative and interesting and in how you could explain everything in, you know, one hour of what you've done last 10 years. <laughs> Amazing. Um, um, so I'm from Harvest Plus and listening to you, I thought we were soulmates in terms of projects and that really emphasized togetherness as well. Um, we work across disciplines, across countries, continents, um, research and implementation together. And, um, and also we finish our three phases and we're in our second generation, although we haven't called us, so uh, we're going to be scaling up um, to reach many more people. So in order to learn from your long-standing experience on scaling up, I have um, three questions. One of them is, I guess, to you, Purnima, did you look at um, cost or cost effectiveness or cost per mm. beneficiary reached? And did you find that they were decreasing um, within a country or across countries through the phases or through time? And um, my second question is, um, um, I guess most of these interventions were initially funded by the foundation, which incidentally also funded Harvest Plus to begin with, so thank you. Um, so I was wondering um, if you saw the, the governments or the private sector also contributing on their own accord or taking up um, your interventions and mainstreaming them in their own interventions, sort of paying for them themselves. And my third question is, um, firstly, congratulations for 75 papers, very, very impressive. But um, I was wondering, uh, in addition to the papers, what other knowledge <coughs> management products have you developed so that you know, other countries that are not in your phases can take up these interventions and implement them? So how did you codify the learnings? What kind of tools, guidelines, and whatnot have you developed? So thank you. With Pranima. Okay. Um, really great questions, everyone. Thank you. Um, so, John, I, I think your question on layering is really important. It's a very difficult piece to disentangle because what we were comparing was the intensive package that has the mass media and the um, uh, home visiting, the community, the interpersonal counseling. You would imagine I could say that after yeah. <laughs> interpersonal yeah. counseling. Together now. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, 
and in the in the control areas you have the mass media campaign but what we what you can't dis disentangle or what you can't say from this is that you don't need the mass media in the intensive areas because it's, there's clearly you know what I think we can say that you really I don't think you can do this without outreach and support because the interpersonal counseling was so much more than messages. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, support, it was problem solving, there was some lactation counseling piece, there's, mm -hmm. you know, management, you're helping families to do some of that. So I, I actually don't think we can really do that without outreach. The impact results show that. You know, where you had longer sustained reach of the outreach, you, you get quite a bit more. Um, you know, I think we'd like to work with our data a little bit more to see what other stories we can tell around the mass media. We have very, you know, there's a lot of information on the, it's a reminder for the frontline health workers. The mothers have seen that as well. We have data showing that the combination um, is better than any one alone, so it clearly is important. But I, I think we can do a little more just on the mass media piece now that we've done the main main evaluation. Uh, India, yes, definitely, that's many more days of conversation, but Alive and Thrive is in India and is exploring, mm -hmm. and, and we will be collaborating with them on some research. Uh, so I think we'll hopefully learn together there as well. Um, the cost and cost effectiveness. Yeah, um, and then Derek's question on process valuation. So on the cost, yes, we did look at costs. We have not yet published our cost data, and that's something we're also discussing, uh, you know, how to actually put that out in a way that's useful for other people. We do have cost per beneficiary reached with the different types of interventions in each of the countries. Um, we will have to figure out how we take that to cost effectiveness, but we think that programmatically, even putting the costs out is very, very important. So it's something for us to talk about, and it's available. If you want the information, we can share that with you. And Derek, your question on the tension between the quantitative evaluation and the process evaluation. I, I actually don't think there's any tension at all. A lot of the process evaluation work is also quantitative. I think the tension is really that when you're doing process evaluations over long periods of time, you need, I mean, we as researchers have spent more time in, on the, in the duration of this collaboration doing process evaluation work than doing impact evaluation work. And so what it required was more the longstanding research partnership of people that uh, were working with the program teams to do the process evaluation, and that costs money. That long, creating the long collaboration, that, that, that is what creates money. I don't think methodologically there are no tensions, and the methods are well-defined for both. So I think that's okay. it. Karen? Sure. Um, okay, I think uh, there were three things I'll comment on. The first, um, I think was government question and, and kind of uptake. So yes, there have been some documentation that's out there, certainly like the social franchise in Vietnam, the government was through government services that's picked up in other provinces um, throughout Vietnam, Bangladesh similarly. Um, I would say one of the, the important things is what we were trying to do was not necessarily replicate wholesale programs, but you know, figuring out what pieces might be appropriate, recognizing, as Ellen said, the contexts are just are so vastly different. So I think we've seen the uptake of a lot of different pieces from like a whole model to kind of, you know, materials by SIF in Ethiopia. So lots of different things along a continuum, um, but certainly some evidence there. Um, I think the question about also your question on the knowledge management is a great question. Um, right, a lot of us, you know, and I think all of us here recognize that, you know, journal articles get you so far. Um, so we've absolutely, you know, through lots of different venues, if you go to our website, there's lots of different pieces of documentation up there from technical briefs, which we will start doing again under the next generation, to more um, kind of programmatic toolkits that can be helpful around policy advocacy, eventually social behavior change, um, you know, video blogs. Um, a lot of the focus, actually, of Generation 2, this next award, is on knowledge integration. So we're going to have to really spend a lot more time um, thinking very carefully about how we will be capturing everything um, far beyond, you know, peer-reviewed journal articles, of course. And that's just been one component. Um, also, you know, I don't even know how many presentations 
Zoe, who's in the in the crowd here, um, is on our KM team and could give you more information. But you know, in lots of different venues to different crowds, and I think that was again one of the strengths of the consortium. You had really different groups that were would learn in different ways, um, and that is a good transition to your question about kind of these different settings that, you know, and a lot of people have said you don't have a BRAC everywhere, you don't have a Vietnamese public health system. Those are outliers to some extent. Um, so what are you doing now? And um, I think, you know, in terms of where we're heading next with Generation 2, it is a lot of this kind of um, distillation of what we've learned to date and trying to figure out how to then um, bring that to these complicated systems that we're in. So we are working in places like Nigeria where there's an extremely fragile health system. I would say Ethiopia, frankly, was extremely challenging still today, even though they may have, you know, ground troops and, and you know, people on the ground in terms of the quality of delivering what we think is important and have proven to be um, effective with the interpersonal communications. We're working in places, or we will work in the, the developing regional states in Ethiopia where there is no sense of government in many situations. So what we're beginning to do, again, is look at more capacity development, system strengthening, um, and what are the pieces you need to do to strengthen those systems to eventually be able to deliver. That may not get resolved within our lifespan of this award, um, I would say, but we're very intent, at least, on learning what can be done in those situations without you know, getting out the bracks of the world, because we recognize that is not a viable option in most of the locations that we need to work in. We do have to finish in four minutes okay. <laughs> because of the taping. <laughs> yes. Um, I think all the questions have been answered, so I'll just say a few more. Re I didn't write that one down. I'm sorry. Um, apologies. <laughs> apologies. I didn't write that one down. Um, the, you know, whereas Generation 1, or the first grant was about proof of concept, and the second grant was about can we replicate, and now this third grant, I have to say, baked into it is this idea is this is not going to live on forever. And so what kinds of things do we need to do to, as Karen said, integrate knowledge and learning? So it's kind of trying to push the envelope a little bit in terms of ensuring continuity and sustainability, capacity and system strengthening, which were the things that we didn't focus on as much um, in the, you know, as overt uh, uh, areas of focus in the earlier grants. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to say before is, you know, there has been so much learning from this grant, so much uh, has come out of it, it's actually hard to take it all up. And to really learn, and it, you almost there's no has been no time to sit back and breathe and say what pieces of all of the things that we've learned have we really not capitalized on and taken out and really made um, made useful. And so it's just a plea to say that you know there's much more we can be learning from this, and um, hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit of that in the next few years. Okay, um, thank you. For the to the speakers for really very interesting for a very interesting session and and nice insightful comments from all of you. Um, one thing that I think we haven't talked about very much about generation two and, and or, or even phase two is the fact that I think one of maybe the lessons learned from the first phase or the evolution of thinking in nutrition has led phase two to include maternal nutrition. Uh, and I think that's a very important point, one of the uh, potential um, uh, limiting factor for, for child growth obviously is, is poor maternal nutrition, especially in, in, in Asian countries or where, where mothers are malnourished. So this is also something that was picked up once we finished phase one, phase two immediately. And we have been discussing it during phase one that, oh my God, we're not dealing with the mothers here. And, that's a very important piece of the puzzle, and, and it was picked up in phase two and, and, and forever after, I think. So that's very good. Uh, and, and one last thing, um, the learning aspect, and uh, again, I could say to Ellen, uh, this investment, of the, this visionary uh, aspect of the project of investing in learning and, and talk to other donors as well. <laughs> you know, like I was telling Karen to talk about uh, uh, to other donors about questionnaires. Well, uh, I, I think in, in with many donors, we're, we're going backwards a little bit with that. They just they just want impact, but they don't want to measure impact, and so they just believe they have impact if they roll out. And so we still have a, a, a real big issue with. Um, 
learning through implementation, as you, as you mentioned, the, the, the implementation learning as well as the what works and, and at what cost. And so, so those are my two last final messages. I don't know, Schengen, if you would like to say anything. Okay. You have the final word. Well, the final <laughs> word I just, I just gave, and I want to thank everyone for coming <laughs> and, and, uh, and come again. We, we, the, our room is, is small today, but it can be much larger if uh, more people come. <laughs> so come again. Thank you very much. Thank you.